Hey guys, welcome back to the free Unity course in which we learn about Unity and we also learn about C Sharp a little bit. So, last time we left, we actually um, iterate through our arrow using a for loop, a double for loop in this case, but we never really add any visual to, you know, just have a look at this data. So, today we're going to learn how to spawn objects. Uh, we're going to be learning one of the ways to spawn an object, how to spawn primitives, and there's also going to be another way we learn in the same episode actually when we spawn our apple. So, I'm going to start with the very first one. Just have a look at this line of code right here, game object dot create primitive, and then ask you what type of primitive you want to create. Now, you don't really see what I'm seeing right here, but it tells you you can create a capsule, a cube, a cylinder, a plane, a quad, or a sphere. In our case, we're going to be spawning a cube. So with that simple line of code, I should actually be able to just randomly spawn a cube in the middle of my world. And if we have a look here, here is a cube. So that is what I plan on using to actually um, put, um, say, right here or on the other line. That's going to be my trail, basically. Now, here is what I'm going to do in this case. Since we want our trail to stay for a little bit longer, what I'm going to do here is say snake score is going to be equal to 3 at the beginning. So we should have a length of 3 in the first array. Right. So every time we move, we want to be spawning a new one of those all the time. And we also want to be positioning it at the right place. Right now it was positioned at 0, 0, 0, which is obviously not going to work. So here is what we are going to be doing. We're going to be using that line of code and we're going to be putting it every time we move because every time we move, we create a new cube. And then later on, um, every time we move, we're also going to be removing one cube, the last one basically. If we just head down, I have this in my clipboard, so control X on that. If we just head down to where we move, which is right here, we're gonna say game object, create primitive. And now we have to move this object. And uh, I know I'm, I'm gonna be skipping over like few important things, but we're gonna come back to them uh, really soon. But here is how I am going to actually keep track of what cube um, I actually get out of this. Basically, this is a function, and functions sometimes they can return you value. Now we never really saw that before because every every function we create has um, this keyword in front of them, which means void means nothing. Basically, you always return nothing. So private void update means you're not getting a return value back out of that. And like I said, this is something we're going to be covering. But right now, just bear with me. Check this out. We we're actually allowed to do this thing. So we declare a new game object, we call it geo, and then when we create one using that function, there's also a return value. In this case, the return value would be the cube that we create. So geo would be equal to the cube we just create right now on this frame. On the line beforehand, we create a cube and geo is equal to that. So with this, we can say geo the transform dot position and then move it somewhere where we need it. So where exactly would be the right place to move this cube? Let's actually try moving it to snake X and snake Y. Now, to move it here, we have to store it inside of a vector three. And if you guys remember, we have to do that because, because dot position is actually a vector three. So we have to create a vector three to position our cube. And here's how we're gonna be doing it. We are going to be declaring a new vector three and inside of the parentheses, it takes in um, it has three overloads. The first one is empty. You can leave it like that. It's going to create a new vector 3 and that value is going to be equal to 0, 0, 0. Now the second overload is x and y. So you can give it a x and also a y value and it's going to create you a vector 3 with that. So it's basically going to add a z value of 0. Or the third one it says um, x, y, and z. So you can give it a normal x, normal y, normal z and it's just going to create you a vector out of that. So we're going to go ahead and just type in snake x, snake y, and just to be sure, we're going to, type, we're going to be typing um, 0 here for the z. Okay, let's run this code, see if we actually get any problem. We end up having something, but obviously this is definitely not what we want here. So with this value, with 0, 4, 0, um, we actually get something that doesn't look too bad, but there's definitely some errors. So let's have a look at what exactly those errors are. Um, right now, if you can tell on the very first frame, we don't create anything here. And that is that is something um, that is not going to work. So basically, we should have something 
being left behind us. But we also create a new cube that is stacked on top of our head, which is definitely not something we want. So we just have to reverse the order in which we create our cube, so our cube goes back to the spot we were, and not where we're going. So I'm going to be actually moving my code a little bit, so these line of code, let's move them to somewhere um, where they make a little bit more sense. So if we just go before we actually add up our direction, we can be creating our trail here. As simple as that. Now obviously there's gonna be some cases where um, this is not a good practice and that is when we actually hit the end here let me just show you. So when we end up losing we end up stacking a lot of cubes here and they just keep going going going. However our snake is actually still you know in the bounds he's still right here that's our snake but we just keep creating new cubes um, all the way there. So definitely there is some checks to do. There is definitely some error checks to do. But right now we're actually going to disregard this error. We're going to leave it here because later on we are going to implement a logic that says um, if we lose once, let's not even update that whole code. Let's not even run that code. So if we if we just lose once, then we're not going to be spawning stuff. We're not going to be testing again. We're going to be saving memory and we're also going to avoid this bug. But right now we know that this actually works. So we actually create um, we actually create a new object, we position it at the right place, now we just need to remove it. And now that is a very tricky part, because I plan on doing the delete right here, you know, when we remove, when we do a minus minus on where you are, uh, say you were on the 1, you go to 0, this is where I actually want to delete, but now which one do I delete, which is going to be quite hard to actually tell. Let's start by actually putting brackets on that, and start writing down our condition. So if grid at the index i and j is now equal to 0, because you know um, if it was at 1 we do minus minus and then it goes to 0, that means we, we have to destroy something, a block basically. But how do we know which one it is? Because when a new frame appears, this thing is you know, out of memory, we don't really know what this is anymore. So there is a few things we could actually do to find which object is the right one. Um, we could be renaming our object, giving them like a very specific name with their position and then we find them using their name. We can be uh, looking them up using their position, we could do something like that. So we can find an object based on its position. Now the best way to actually go about this would be to use a list because you can actually push and uh, pop out of the list. But we haven't seen list just yet so we're gonna keep it I would say simple, but it's still going to be a little bit complicated. We're going to be changing the name of the object when we create it, and then we're going to be accessing um, that name. Let me just show you exactly how we're going to go about doing this. So when we create a new cube, we also move it to a known position. We already know where the, this cube is going. Now what I'm going to do here is actually change the name of that game object by doing geo, so our game object, our cube we just created dot its name, so we're accessing its name, and we're gonna set it to snake x to string. It's actually a function that is going to convert our int into a string. So if our int is one, it's gonna actually write it in um, a string value, basically. So we don't actually consider this as an integer anymore. Now it's a string. Then since we have a string right here, we can actually add it up with another string. So let's do snake y dot to string. And if we just run this, have a look in the game, what kind of result we get, this is what we get. So 0, 4, 1, 4, 2, 4, 3, 4, and this is pretty much just telling you where in the array this is. And also be careful because you can also go in the minus 1, so minus 1, but you know this is not going to happen once we have our um, def check. So if we're, if we're dead, then we're not doing the update. But basically using this line, we're now able to know, if we just take the name of the object, we're able to know where exactly it's positioned. So I'm going to be using the same exact logic to actually fetch it from the other, um, the other side here when we're trying to delete. So let's do something like game object, find, and the object we're trying to find is i to string plus um, j to string. Now again, this is a function, like I mentioned earlier, this is um, a function that returns a value. And this is going to return you a game object. We can call it to destroy. 
another game object to destroy is going to be equal to the matching name there is, um, if of course there is. Now what I'm going to do next is actually invoke unity destroy function that takes care of just getting rid of an object. We're going to do destroy, as simple as that, and in the parentheses it's going to be taking what exactly you're trying to destroy. In this case, we're trying to destroy to destroy, which is our game object, so we're trying to get rid of that game object. Now we are going to hit a lot of problems. Let's have a look at those problems. And we don't actually have any problems. Okay, so I was expecting, um, I was expecting to have some problem in terms of um, not being able to find the object. And I didn't get a problem, so I'll just, I'll just make the check here because I believe that eventually we might hit it. Um, just have a look at this. So basically. If to destroy is not equal to null, if it is not equal to null, then we're gonna go ahead and just destroy it. This is a safety check. Because in case to destroy was actually null, in case it was not able to find a name, um, a game object with that name, then to destroy would be equal to null, and it would try to destroy something that is null. In that case, it would also crash the game. So now this is a safety check to make sure that the game is not actually going to crash. Let's actually play our game. It actually um, it's starting to take shape here. So that's definitely not too bad. As you can tell, our snake score is of three. And we always have three snakes, or three cube in that case. Snake being our head, and then now 52 would be something uh, five in X and also two in Y. Let's uh, quickly do something so we don't get confused too much. I am going to create another cube, call it wall X or wall minus X. and just put it on the left side here. So minus one in Y, scale it up by um, five in Y. Or is that gonna be enough? Let's use actually 10, so that's actually 10, my bad. And also put that five here. So we actually have some bounds going on. Um, same thing for the other side, so wall X, you wanna be putting that at 11, or do you wanna be putting that at 11 or 10? Let's leave it on 11. Now another wall, in this case, this is gonna be wall Y. You wanna be changing the scale in X to 10, and then you wanna be changing the position in X to five. We just put it up here, and that should be on 10 or 11. I'm gonna be using 11 again. And finally, wall minus Y. Let's actually test this out in the game if um, the wall actually makes sense. So definitely some error going on here. Um, it should be a little bit lower than that. So here it is, those are the actual good values. So minus one here, 10 there, um, 10 there, and minus one here. You might wanna be making this a little bit bigger in this case. Now, of course, um, this, this would require actual modeling, actual effort but I am nowhere an artist and right now we're learning how to code. So one thing at a time, and might as well just put that on 12, make it look good a little bit more, maybe 4.5, you know, just play around that until we get something that is satisfying. Now all those walls should actually be fine. Uh, I'm also going to be moving my camera so I can have a look at this thing while I'm playing it. That would be cool. And let's see if we actually if we're able to play on all the sides. So I'm gonna be following the sides, see if we crash. Everything seems to be fine just now. Now remember, we're constantly creating new cubes and also deleting those cubes. Okay, so now let's try one step further. So I'm gonna go until here, it crashes, so that's fine. And also just for testing purpose, I'm gonna be boosting the speed here. I'm gonna be using some MLG skill to play my snake game. Now let's crash into the wall. Oh, and we are able to crash here on this side as well. Let's go down, also crashing here. And we should also be able to crash on the, this side. Yep, so we're crashing on all the sides. Now let's try the artist part here. I'm gonna be putting my snake score on say five. Let's put back the speed to say 0 0.35, why not? And we're gonna try to crash in ourselves. So let's go ahead and just have the full length. Now let's do a 360 loop. Actually, I went down, so I did crash on myself. Um, let's try that again. Up, left, and down, and I was crashing in myself. Now, um, as you can tell, we stopped moving 
the actual snake because we lost. So the snake is still at the losing position, still right here. And what we're going to do at this point is we're going to make sure we don't update anymore once we lose. So it's going to be fairly simple. We're going to be keeping track of that using a boolean. So bool um, has lost. It's going to be equal to false by default. And then if we lose, we are going to say has lost is equal to true. Same thing here. We do lose if we go here as well. And what else? Do we have any other losing condition? I don't think we do. Okay. So now the next thing that is going to happen is at the very beginning of our update, we are going to say if we have lost, so if has lost, just like that, we're going to hit the return statement that we mentioned in the last episode. So if you guys remember, the return statement would just end our function right here. So basically, if we have lost, it's going to go up here, do a if has lost, that's true, hit return, and just disregard the whole function. It's just going to go back and keep on doing what it has to do. Then on the next frame, it's going to say, have you lost? Yep, you still, you know, you still have lost. So it's going to return and just disregard this whole thing. Now let's give it a try, see if we still have this um, really messy update. So we face the wall, we don't even delete, we just lose like that, and it just stays there. Our game isn't frozen, anything, you know, other update loop would run, but the update loop of our snake is pretty much stopped. So this is what happens when we do lose. Now let's try colliding with ourselves again. And we have lost right here. So guys, that is pretty much where I'm going to end today's episode. We're starting to have something that has a nice shape. In um, the next one, we're going to be spawning the apple using the instantiate and also prefab. We have to look at prefab. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you learned something. And if you did, please leave me a like on the video. Really appreciate that. Check out the Patreon page. Check out the Facebook page. Check out all the stuff in the description that keeps me going. And thank you so much for watching once more. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.